welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I will show you how to make the snowman in a scrubby. Scrubby. <laughs> this is a super cute scrubby that is made using some fairly simple crochet stitches that I will show you how to make today. All you need to do is download that free pattern from redheart.com, gather your materials, and we can get started. If you need a link for the pattern, you can find it right down there in the video description box below. And while you're down there, smash that like button as my kids say. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to point out is that this particular scrubby is made using Scrubby Sparkle. This is a fantastic yarn by Red Heart that is 100% polyester and that means it is going to dry quicker than your regular old cotton dishcloth, making it less likely to sour and get kind of gross and nasty in your sink. Not to mention the sparkle really makes it look like the, uh, the snowman is glistening like snow, right? It's, it's pretty exciting. As I mentioned, this is made up using some fairly simple stitches and we're just going to jump right in here at the start and get going with it. Once you have the free pattern, again it is available over on redheart.com. I'll put a little link to it right up there in that I tab as well so that way you can get started with that. Let's begin by getting our color A, which is Ice Pop. It's the blue color. And I will be using a slightly bigger hook than is recommended in the pattern just so that you can better see the stitches against the red hook. We will begin with a slip knot. You place the tail of the yarn in the palm of your hand, take the working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and your middle finger, and come back up. When you come back up, cross over and turn your hand over. If you take your hook, go underneath the first loop, grab the back loop and pull it through. Take your fingers out and give that a nice tug and you have a slip knot. That is the first step to making the scrubby. Once you make a slip knot, you want to go ahead and chain 25 stitches. To do a chain, you take your hook, you go from left underneath the yarn back to the right. And with the hook of the hook, you will snag that yarn and bring it right on through. Let's do that again. You go from left underneath back up to the right, snag the yarn and bring it on through. You will do this until you have 25 chains and you will be able to count your chains because you will look for this V stitch. If I'm holding my chains really still, still, you can see that there is sort of like a V stitch right there and look at the core of the yarn, the actual solid core. If you count those V stitches, that will give you the count for the 25 chains. Remember, you never count the loop on your hook. Once you have 25 chains, we begin row one. And row one has us put a double crochet in the fourth chain from hook. So remember, you do not count the loop on your hook and you will count one, two, three, four chains. In that fourth chain, you will put a double crochet. So you yarn over your hook, come down to the fourth chain and just put your hook directly into the chain. Yarn over your hook, pull that yarn over through those chains, and now you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over your hook, draw through two. Yarn over your hook, draw through two. Just so you know, the beginning skip chains actually counts as a double crochet. The best thing I like to do is take a stitch marker and place it into that third chain of those turning chains because it allows you to know that that will be the end of your row. So I like to use a removable stitch marker and place it into that third chain. Once you've done that, you will carry on placing a double crochet into each chain down the row. So you go to the next chain and you work the double crochet once again. Once you've done that, you'll go to the next chain and you simply just kind of hold your work out and you see where you can work, where you worked into one and you move on to the next. Do this down to the end of the row. Once you finish this row, you will have 23 double crochets. Don't forget to count your initial turning chain as a double crochet when you're counting along. 
What's really awesome is row one and row two of the scrubby is exactly what you will do for the bow. You just do row one and two for the bow as well. So as I'm teaching you these first couple rows of the scrubby, you're also learning how to do the bow instructions for the scrubby also. Let's go ahead and move on to row two. For row two, we begin by chaining three stitches. And those three stitches will count as a double crochet just like before. So what I will do at this point is I will grab another stitch marker and I am just gonna place it into that third chain. So it's the chain directly underneath the loop on my hook. I'm placing a stitch marker there because that's gonna let me know that's the end of my row. Now, what I will go ahead and do is I'm going to do a front post double crochet around the next double crochet. Then I will do a back post double crochet around the next double crochet. So I'm gonna alternate back and forth post stitches. So here we go. You yarn over your hook and what you will do is you're gonna take your hook and you will go into the right side of that stitch and come out the left side. Can you see how I have the post of the stitch directly onto the shaft of my hook? Once I've done that, I yarn over my hook like I normally would, and I'm gonna take my hook back through that same path. So I will take my hook and the yarn that I just yarned over underneath that post and then come back up the right side. Now I'm back in a position to work a double crochet because I have three loops on my hook, correct? So I yarn over my hook, draw through one, or draw through two, I apologize. Yarn over my hook and draw through two. So I've just completed a front post double crochet. Now we will do a back post double crochet. You yarn over your hook, coming to the back of your work, coming up the right side, and we're gonna go over top of that post now and come out the left side back to the back of the work. Yarn over, take our hook back that same path, come back up over top of the post and come back out the right side and up. Yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So now we've done a back post. When you finish your back post, you'll notice you have a little bit of a ridge right here. That's perfectly normal, that's the, the structure of the front and the back post stitches. If you would like to learn more about the front post and back post stitches, so that way you can better see how they're constructed, go ahead and check out the videos I have here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'll make sure I put a link to the videos right down there in the video description box below, and I'll also add a direct link with that little I button right up there, so that way you can better see how the stitches are made when it's not using the scrubby yarn. Let's go ahead and get back to our work here. And I'm going to continue to alternate the front post double crochet and the back post double crochet all the way down to the end of the row. At the end of the row, I will finish with a double crochet in the top of my beginning chain. And I want to get to that point so I can show you how those stitch markers become really useful for you to know where your stitch needs to go. I've gotten down to where I finished with my last front post double crochet and I need to place a double crochet in the third chain of the turning chain. So you can see here, it's the stitch that I marked at the beginning. So if I place my hook directly into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, I am ready to finish my double crochet and I'm ensured that I am having a nice clean edge and I won't get a misshapen square. Now that I finished row two, we can move on to row three, which is really super simple because we're gonna carry on with this stitch pattern. Only now we've established the front post and the back post stitches. So when you carry on now, what you will do is you will continue to place back post double crochets around back post double crochets and front post double crochets around front post double crochets. Really super easy, let me show you. At the end of your row, go ahead and turn your work and then chain three. These three chains count as a double crochet once again. So what I will do is I will remove the marker that we just used because we don't need it anymore. We already have that stitch worked into. And I will place my marker into the chain that's right behind the loop on my hook. Okay, so that is my new starting point. 
Now I can carry on with my work and do a back pose double crochet around the next stitch. Now, even if I didn't have my instructions here, I could see that I am looking at a back post double crochet because here's that ridge that we talked about, correct? So if I want to stack all of my back posts on each other, I know that if I'm looking at a back post, I will work a back post on top of it. So I complete a back post double crochet. Without looking at the instructions, I know I will be placing a front post double crochet around the next one because I'm looking at a front post double crochet, correct? Pretty simple. So what's awesome with this is even if you don't have the instructions in front of you, you can keep on track. All you have to do is read your crochet. If you're looking at a back post, work a back post double crochet. If you're looking at a front post, work a front post double crochet. Continue on until you get to the last two stitches of the row. I'm to the last two stitches of my row and I will finish off with my back post double crochet around this last one. And then I will place a double crochet into the third chain of my turning chain, which I've already marked so it makes it very easy to find. Just go right into it and work my double crochet. And the instructions say right now we are to change the color A. You can either finish off your blue and then rejoin with white, or I can... Mm. The instructions at this point say to change the color B. Now you could just fasten off your blue and then rejoin with the slip stitch with the white, or you could do this neat and handy little tip I'm going to give you. What I want to do is I am going to pull out just that last pullover, pull through two, from that double crochet I just completed. So what I have here are two loops on my hook. I will go ahead and I will snip my yarn. I like to cut a nice long tail so that I can weave in my ends. Now I'll grab my next color, which is my color B, marshmallow, and I will pick up my work and with the tail of the marshmallow just resting right down here by the tail of the ice pop, I will yarn over with the marshmallow and pull that marshmallow through those two lo loops. What has happened is I've changed colors, so I have a new color on my hook, but it has not disrupted the stitch from below. All I do now is carry on with my row four, which is repeating rows two and three, so we know how to do this. And I've already given you a tip that all you will need to remember is you begin with a chain three, you end with a double crochet, and in between you work back post double crochets on back post and front post double crochets on front post. The instructions have you repeat this through row 13, but if you wanted to make your scrubby a little bit bigger, you could go ahead and do that. Just make sure you have enough of the scrubby sparkle with you to accommodate those needs. Let's go ahead and move this aside and pull in the scrubby so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see right here these nice long vertical lines. Those are my front post double crochets of the scrubby. It makes the scrubby a little bit more dimensional and it gives you something even more to be able to scrub those pots and pans or your body. It is the same on both sides because the front post and back post double crochets are reversible. As I mentioned, this little bow right here is made up just like you did the first two rows of the scrubby pattern itself. So you already know how to make this bow. Let's go ahead and learn how to make the eyes and the nose, and then I will give you just some quick trips on whip stitching those onto your scrubby and you'll be on your way. As you can see on the scrubby, the eyes are made using the black licorice color, which is really perfect, right, for the little scrubby. But it's not perfect for videos, so I am gonna go back to the ice pop because I feel like you can see that relatively well to show you how to make the eyes. Now these eyes are super easy, and they're so easy that it might be deceiving and you might doubt yourself. So let me show you how to make the eyes. You start off by placing a slip knot directly onto your hook and then chain two stitches. Once you chain those two stitches, we will place six single crochet into the very first chain you created. So it's the second chain from the hook. And it really is that easy, you guys. You simply go into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So that would be one. I go back into that same chain, 
yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So there's two. And I just keep going through that same loop until I get a total of six single crochets. And you'll notice as I'm working and it starts to build, I'm just sort of circling around. And at the end, by this point, I'm kind of, I really am sort of on the bottom of that chain, just filling it in. Now I don't, I've lost count, so I'm just gonna do one more, it really doesn't matter. And then once I've done that, all I do is I join with a slip stitch to the start of my, my circle, right? So my round right there. And I yarn over, pull through a loop, pull through the one on my hook. And I will go ahead and I will snip this tail a little bit longer than normal because I can use it to sew on the eye to the snowman. Super cute, right? So if I were sewing this onto my snowman right now, all I do is I'd pull over my finished square, take the eye, find wherever I wanted to place it, take my bent tip tapestry needle. Let me pull one of those up. I love these bent tip tapestry needles. I highly recommend you get them. Let me show you what they look like in the package. They're amazing. They look like this. They are so good. So all you would do is you take your bent tip. I highly recommend using the steel bent tip. And so you, you fold your yarn, thread the yarn through the eye of the needle, and then you would simply use your tails here to sew on directly to your square. So let's see how you would do this. If this were my square, and I just say I wanted to put one right there, I would just stick my needle literally right through the fabric, pull that close, get it placed, okay? And then what I would do is I would take this end, this is the tail that I just finished with, and I would thread it onto my needle Maybe. Sometimes the fuzziness of the scrubby gets in the way. It makes it a little tricky. Ah! So don't worry, even the professionals have a hard time. All right, so there we are. So I have this in place, and all I would do is literally just go through the blue of the eye, or for you it would be black, and then through the fabric of the scrubby and just come up and down. So up and then back down. Okay, so I am literally just sewing it into place. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be necessarily pretty because the scrubby sparkle yarn hides a multitude of scents. I feel like you can get a good look of how the eye is sewn into place. And it's really super simple, right? It's also the same way you would sew in the nose. As we take a look over here, you can see that the nose is placed smack dab in the center of the square. It's just to the right slightly, and it kind of, it, it tilts up a little bit, you know? So Snowman Head has a, a tilted up nose, and then the eyes are just centered on either side. This nose is made super easily, you guys. All you do is you change 10 stitches and then you work a series of single crochets, half double crochets, and double crochets down the row to get the shape you want. Once you've done that for two rows, you finish off your nose and you sew it into place just like we did the eye. The last thing to do is just to do a little finishing touch on where you want that kind of cockeyed mouth of snowman. And uh, there you go, you weave in your ends. Now, as far as weaving in your ends, it's super easy with this yarn because as I said, the yarn hides a multitude of sins. But what's really great about the, the polyester of this yarn is it's super strong. So what I like to do is do some hitch knots. So what I've done here is I've just circled through and I am going to just take my yarn, I keep getting it, it's kind of long here, and I'm just gonna thread it through this loop a couple times, and then give it a nice pull. You can see I'm pulling it really taut, and it gives me a nice knot there. And that knot will just kind of work its way into the scrubby part, and it just disappears. So it's really not so difficult to hide your ends in the scrubby. There you go. I'm pretty sure I've given you everything you need in order to make this super cute snowman in a scrubby pattern. This is a free pattern once again from redheart.com. 
Be sure to go over there and check out all of the other free scrubby patterns that they have available to you. They are amazing. And if you find that you need some instructions, chances are I've done a video to show you how to make each one. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and push that subscribe button so that way you are up to date whenever there's a new video released right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns and I will catch you again soon. Bye. Hey, don't leave yet. I'm sure there are other videos here that you will enjoy. Go ahead and check out some of my knitting and crochet videos as well as some of my crafting videos. You will love them, I promise. If you hit subscribe, you'll be up to date whenever there's a new video released. And as my kids say, don't forget to smash that like button. Bye.